welcome to the Arts Music Store Canadian Gear Guide. We're going to be showcasing the latest and greatest music gear options here available in Canada. My name is Shane and today we're going to be talking about the Black Star Amped 3. This is the third iteration from the Amped series. The first starting with the Amped 1 that is a light to medium gain overdrive which is a great pedal platform unit. The second iteration has some great effects options and some built-in pedals that is perfect for the all-in-one unit, someone looking to replace their entire pedal board with a all-in-one unit. Today we're going to be showcasing the third iteration, which is my favorite and one I actually own myself. This is the Amped 3. The beauty of the Amped 3 is it replaces your entire amp head. Three channels, high gain, built-in reverb, tons of features. On this guy, if you imagine, you take that amp head and you take the foot switch that they give you, you combine them together, and that's what you get here. This has up to 100 watts of power, all solid state, a 20 watt, 1 watt switchable option if you want to do something at the jam space a little bit quieter, or take it home and rock that 3 a.m. jam or 2 a.m. jam really quietly in the bedroom. On the top side, you have your typical features like you would see in your normal amplifier as far as volume gain, your EQ section, uh, a reverb uh, knob there, a really nice option that you have here is a presence. Uh, really helps you dial in that high end when you're doing your gain. Or even if you're doing some cleans, if you want something that's a little more laid back and subtle, you can dial that presence knob back. You don't have to worry about such crazy highs. Uh, you have an overall master control, which I think is fantastic. That coupled with a actual dedicated volume and gain and a power amp option for 20 watts, one watts instead of 100, really gives you the versatility to do any kind of venue you're looking for. Big stages, like I mentioned, the jam space or at home, you've got all of those volumes taken care of. On the top side of the amplifier, you have everything that you would normally see. Um, you've got a gain and volume respectively, your three band EQ, a presence knob, which is great to control that high end if you're doing some crazy high gain, or you wanna do a little more sultry laid back clean tone, that's a great knob to have on there. Uh, your ISF knob to go between your USA and your UK voicings to give you a little more punchiness or maybe something that's a little more throaty and has a little more uh, grit to it. Um, you have a master volume here as well to control your overall volume output. That coupled with the 1 watt, 20 watt, 100 watt switchable setting really gives you the versatility to do any size venue or small room that you want to do whether it be home or the stage. You have a power amp response, which is a great feature on here. You've got an EL84, an EL34, and a 6L6 version. What that means is you can have your nice American style clean tone with tons of headroom. You can have, you know, maybe your crunch channel be something with a little more grit that's going to be a little more British sounding that you like hearing, maybe that classic 70s rock. You've got that as an option in here as well. Uh, for your reverb, you've got a dark and a light feature, which is fantastic, a little tweakability. And on the boost side, you have a pre and a post option. So pre, like you would expect, you get a little bit more grid out of your tone. If you're clean, you're gonna drive that a little bit more. If you're already overdriven, you're gonna get a little extra bite and compression out of it typically. Uh, on the post side, it's what you would imagine. You get a volume boost. So you can use that for solos if you wanted to. You can use the pre-boost for solos as well if you want a little more bite out of it, but that post is a little more useful in that sense for your genuine volume boost to get you up above everybody else in the mix. On the back side of this unit, you've got all the features you could ever ask for. You've got an effects loop in and out, you've got your normal in, and you have an out to run to maybe another amplifier if you wanted to do that, and you didn't want to use the power section on here, you could run it into an interface if you wanted to. Um, you could even run the USB-C out right into your computer. You can record that way. You can you know, access all the cab rig software that's on there, all their different options for microphones, for rooms, for different cabinets. You can utilize all that through the USB-C. You've got a MIDI option on there as well. Uh, you've got two different cab outputs, an 8 ohm and a 16 ohm respectively. Your 8 ohm, you could easily daisy chain a couple 16s if you wanted to, or if you're like me and you've just got a single 16 ohm 112 at home, you can rock it with that and get all the volume you need to, especially if you're using that 100 watt setting. It really pushes that 112 a lot, and you can tweak your settings there to make it sound a little fuller if you'd like to. On the side, or I should say still the back of the amplifier for this particular model, uh, you've got an XLR out to run into an interface if you'd like, or to run to front of house. That XLR out does have an option for the cab sims like I mentioned, which you can change in the cab rig like we talked about a, a few seconds ago. 112, 212, 412 built into it right away so you can plug in and go, no problem. You have versatility, you have portability, and you have functionality out of this unit. 
nice, compact. It is for that person who is looking to maybe get a backup rig, but they don't want to spend a crazy amount of money on a tube amplifier. They want something that might be a little more reliable that they don't have to worry about. Maybe they're just looking for something to throw in a backpack or in the pedal board case as a, as a backup unit. Um, and then you can just pop that on stage. It's going to have all the same features you're looking for as a real amplifier. You could easily set this up in less than five minutes to replace what you're doing and you're back off to the races playing a set. What I love it for is it really just, it was the perfect option for me to have an all-in-one pedal board rig. I throw this on my pedal board along with my other effects units and I'm rocking. Speaking of effects units, on the back side you've got two options for pedal power. You have 500 milliamps total output that you can run to two pedals. Today I'm going to be running a tuner because I think everybody should have a tuner on their rig. If you don't have a tuner, what are you doing? You got to play in tune, right? So we're, we're creating music here. Uh, for the other pedal here, I'm going to be using a precision drive, which is pretty much a tube screamer. This one's got a built-in attack knob on it so you can change your compression, and it does have a built-in noise gate. So particularly for this kind of pairing, it works great. On the clean side, you can use it as a classic tube screamer to get a little more bite or grit out of what you're doing. On the overdrive setting, you can use it as, you know, a, not only a noise gate, but really tighten up that bottom end with the tube screamer and the compressor side of stuff. Really get a tight bottom end to do that gent style of music. So let's dive into the actual unit itself. Let's see what we're working with and uh, run through some of the settings. We're gonna check out the clean tone here. I'm gonna play some stuff. We're gonna go through a little bit of settings so you can kind of hear the difference between the warm and the bright function and then how the, uh, how the gain knob reacts to each one differently. So we'll start on the bright function here. Now this is a little more classic boutique style that should break up a little bit once we get a little more gain going. Whereas the warm channel has a little more headroom, that more light, you know, kind of warm sound as it's described. So, First we'll start on that bright channel and we can already hear it's a little bit more brittle. I'm on the middle pickup setting of this, uh, of this uh, telly here which has some wide range humbuckers in it so a little bit of brittleness on that top end. We'll take it over to the warm setting for that same thing. Right away you hear a difference. Let's get a little more gain going, we're getting a little more volume out of it too. Let's go back to the middle there and we'll switch it over to the bright channel and see how that reacts once we start going. I actually really like how the bottom end filled, on, uh, filled out on that bright channel. really nice. It got decently warm once you actually crank that gain up on it and you engage that signal a little bit more. Let's go back to that warm side of it and see if we can't get something that's going to be like a, a nice kind of background uh, backing track here. We'll engage the bass a little bit more as well. We'll fill out that bottom end. We'll bring back the middle to create a little bit more space. Let's see what that light reverb sounds like in comparison. I kind of like the dark. That's actually really nice. Get a little rounder sound, we're going to change our pick position here. I 
actually that pick position really helped out nicely. Took out some of that brittleness out of the high end. A little rounder sound. Really nice on that warm setting. Um, there's so much potential in this pedal to do a nice, simple kind of shoegazy pedal board setup. Um, maybe the Amped 1 could be a little better, the Amped 2, but I see a lot of potential in this. I see the option that you could easily hit that pre or that post boost to get that solo going or hit that front end to get a little more bite. Um, so let's hear, that, uh, hear how that front end boost reacts if we go uh, pre and post. So we're going to leave the settings the way we are there. Uh, and let's go down to the bridge pickup and see how that reacts. So let's hear what the clean sounds like. Not too much at lower, but let's uh, pick that up. So like you would expect, it's definitely giving you a little bit more little bit more bite out of it. It's a little loud once you get going. The volume difference once you really engage that boost kind of gets up there once you're at that, you know, three o'clock kind of realm. Uh, let's hear what the, just the straight volume is like. So that's just noon in it right there. We'll go back to the pre. So that's not bad. I wouldn't say that you can really use that as like a, a, a tube screamer type boost on that pre side, but you know, they're trying to get into that kind of category. Uh, let's engage the precision drive instead and hear how that reacts with the clean side of stuff. We'll engage a little bit of reverb on there to get a little more sultry sounding. That's not bad. That's right into that, you know, light to medium gain kind of territory. You could, you know, probably pull off some classic rock with that if you really needed to. Um, and then obviously you've got, uh, you've got some other options if you wanted to boost it. So let's see what happens if we, uh, if we hit it with the Black Stars pre-boost and then the Precision Drive. So, here's the normal clean. Here's a boost. That. That woke up really nicely, actually. That slapped the front end fantastic. up pretty decently too. That's not bad. Okay, let's switch over to the crunch channel here. We'll hear a, a little different sound there. We're going to go back to, uh, to noon and er. Make sure that boost is off. We'll bring that reverb down. And uh, Let's check out the crunch setting. We're going to go through some of those tube responses on the crunch to hear that different gain style. Uh, actually, let's go back real quick just so we can hear. So you can really tell the similarities between the 6L6 channel. And that EL84, a little more. Which is funny because the 6L6 and the 34 are both ABs. But have a dramatically different tone to them. Great clean platform though. Let's hit that with the pre-drive. That sounds a lot more British right away like you would expect it to. What about this one? Actually, that's not bad.
was that was a nice little tone there. I enjoyed that. Uh, okay. Anyways, back to the crunch, like we were going to talk about. Uh, crunch side. There it is. Rock and roll. Alright, let's check out the crunch side of stuff here. Uh, you have two settings for the crunch, your typical crunch and a super crunch. Your first crunch setting is going to be what you would expect. You've got a fantastic mid-gain classic rock sound to it that you can boost with something to get a little bit more gain out of it if you're looking to, um, but it's going to you know, take care of a lot of territories in that sense. Uh, we'll start on the 6L6 setting here. We're going to keep everything, you know, kind of in a, a little more sweet spot of you know what we're liking for tone here going through this cab uh, and let's take a little little, little look see here so right away you've got that classic break of nice clarity good full body to it let's check out the EL34 real quick Head up the 84. Again, I really like the 6L6 and the EL84 versions. They're very similar. I still like a 6L6 a little bit more. It seems I'm an American styling kind of guy. Um, but that EL84 sounds fantastic too. If you're looking for something a little throatier, that EL34 right there is going to give it to you. well too like that's a that's a very tasteful sound to it uh, let's see how that reacts with a little bit of the dark reverb roll off a little bit of tone there That. That's really tasteful. Switch over to uh, that super crunch a little bit more for a little more bite. I'll take that reverb off of there though. There's all the bite that you could ever want from that side of stuff, uh, especially for a standard tuning that's got tons of compression. That's going to be great for that kind of punk rock and things like that. Even if you're looking for even like a bigger, higher gain kind of uh, kind of rock sound, this will do it for you. I'm going to take that ISF knob and go a little over to the American side again. So we'll double up. We'll go 6L6 and we'll go to the American side a bit. <laughs> Tons of bite and sustain there. So if you want to do some like.
So that's got tons of bite to it. It's nice and tight, even with some lower gain pickups like these wide ranges, it has a ton of grit to it. So that's a great little setting there. Let's even hit that with a precision drive and see how that sounds. <laughs> drive tightens up that bottom end really nicely. Not like this really needed any more tightness on the bottom end anyway, but it gives it that little extra bite that you're looking for. Um, that super crunch setting is fantastic. I think even like we're nooning the gain on everything, so it's nice and simple. Um, even if you wanted to dial, dial that back. Like, you know, you dial that guy back and you get a little bit more of the flavor, the super crunch with the kind of distortion that you're looking for out of maybe that more kind of classic rock setting. So tons of versatility just in that crunch channel alone. Um, let's kick that gain back up a little bit and let's hit it with, uh, with the boost. <laughs> Just a little bit extra. Let's go a little bit more, see if we get a volume boost too. That's pretty darn good. I love that sound actually. That, that really sounds good. That's got a nice tightness, a good fullness to it. Um, Obviously you could do post boost, hit it with a volume instead if you wanted. Uh, so you could do your solos and things like that like we've mentioned. Um, that is a fantastic setting right there. Uh, really dig it. Let's see what it sounds like if we swap it over to the EL34 in comparison. Swap over to Precision Drive instead. Pretty darn good. Um, solid crunch channel. What, what more could you want out of it? You've got a fantastic, you know, you could really dial it back and go light to medium gain if you wanted to. Um, and it's got all that extra bit if you really wanted to go crazy on it. Um, and speaking of crazy, let's go over to that super overdrive side of stuff. And let's hear uh, what that first overdrive setting sounds like. We'll do a little something like this here. <laughs> The mic. Yeah. Gotcha. So I think I'm catching it perfectly, but it also because I can really hear the picking off the little mic. Yeah. True. She might need to adjust it, but I just realized. Like it sounds, it sounds great. Yeah. But as soon as I pull that back, I can just hear the guitar sound like ten times <laughs> better. So that's great. It's going good, man. I'm loving it. Okay. You having a good time? Uh, this is much better now. I feel much better about the crunch versus the clean yeah. to the point we might go back and redo the clean. No problem. <sighs> Okay, let's check out this uh, full-on overdrive channel here. Uh, we're gonna check out the overdrive one, which is gonna be a little more kind of classic kind of metal, if you will. Um, we'll just do a couple kind of classic, maybe hair metal-ish riffs and see what it sounds like. <laughs> It 
doesn't have enough gain, does it? Let's go back to that crunch side and see how that sounds in comparison. Actually kicking up on that, sec that overdrive does give you a good bit of bottom end and that, that extra gain that you're looking for. Let's switch it over to the overdrive 2 real quick. That's much bigger, much bigger. Uh, okay, let's go back to the overdrive one, just so we'll, you know we won't go too crazy. Uh, we'll hear a couple different, uh, couple different things here. Listen to that. Let's check out some of the clarity on that top end a little bit between the uh, between the power responses because I was just noticing they all chimed a little quirky. Notice a, uh, a little more bite actually in the high end of the EL84, especially compared to the 34. They all have a little different chiminess and, and different character as you would expect from, you know, some different tube stylings kind of thing. Um, I really like that though. It's a little bit of a pedal where you can kind of go down the rabbit hole of, of developing tone a little bit uh, because there's so many nice options in there. Um, it'd be tough to switch or to try and choose again between that EL84 versus 6L6 option. They both sound very fantastic. Um, uh, let's go over to the uh, to the full-on distortion a bit and let's actually change guitars. Let's uh, let's go to a, a drop tune guitar here instead and get some uh, Maybe like a, a drop C sharp or something like that going. We'll swap it over real quick. So we switch guitars up. We've got a, uh, a beautiful ESP here. Uh, one of the E2s, we've got it in uh, drop C sharp. We didn't want to go too low. It's still got some tens on it, so we're not going to go too crazy with tuning. Uh, we're going to check out this full overdrive two setting. Uh, this is the bee's knees here for me. Um, this is where I spend most of my time on this pedal. I love the drop tuning stuff. This does it fantastic. And for me, that was a tough thing to find is finding a, a smaller, more portable unit that was a pedal unit that had fantastic gain. So let's uh, let's rip through a couple different settings here with the tubes. I'm going to engage the uh, the pre-boost at a couple points. We're going to check out the precision drive to tighten up that bottom end. Uh, but let's hear what it sounds like with a drop tune pedal. So we're going to start in the overdrive two position first. Uh, I'm going to leave these EQ settings where they are with a little extra bass, a little less mid and some extra treble there. We've got the uh, the US side notched at nine o'clock. So let's just uh, let's hear what this bad boy sounds like. Check out the EL34 side of stuff.
tons of clarity and definition in the 84 and the 6L6 side of stuff. Like you would expect, a little more punch out of that EL34 side of things. Uh, great settings, uh, that sounds fantastic. I'm gonna stick with the 6L6 and the EL34 for the rest of this just because that's a little more tasteful in my opinion for the sounds that we're going for. Uh, let's incorporate that boost into the, uh, the 6L6 side of stuff. It'll give you a little more, uh, we'll call it chonk, a little more chonk, little chink, chink on the top end there that you're looking for, which is that little bit more bite, right, with that pre. Uh, let's do the same thing on the EL34 side, or EL84, sorry. <laughs> sound pretty good. Uh, I'm going to tweak these tones here a little bit more to get a, uh, a little less bottom end out of this and a little more uh, tightness. Well, that sounds great. Uh, that tightened that bottom end right up. Here's the 6L6 version of that same tone. I'll be honest, I have my presets done for the 6L6 setting on this, and this video today might have might have converted me to the 84 setting because that sounds fantastic on the top end. I mean, they both sound fantastic though. Let's hit a precision drive with that and see how it reacts. I'll turn it off. Right away you get that little extra grit that you're looking for. I'm actually gonna engage uh, the attack a little bit more to tighten up that bottom end to get a little more genty. I love that overdrive setting. Uh, I think that this pedal absolutely shines once you start incorporating some drop tuning and stuff. Blackstar does a fantastic job with their gain structure that really caters uh, to some drop tuning settings and really getting that full balanced overall sound. So, I mean, as you can tell by some of my playing, this is, this is where I live. I love playing in this drop C kind of tuning, drop C sharp, whatever it might be. Um, 
this pedal really, really does a great job of it. Um, even if you didn't incorporate a precision drive into this and you just ran this pedal by itself with a clip-on tuner on your headstock, you could get just about everything you would need out of it. I mean, you've got that pre-boost to get your extra bit of gain on your high gain side. You can hit it on the clean side or the crunch side to get a little bit more flavor going. This pedal really does have all that extra versatility that you could ever want out of it with all the new age features, with incorporating that, you know, the new tech, if you will. You've got your cab rig on the side of it there. You've got, you know, a MIDI in, you've got a USB-C, you've got an effects loop, you've got a power attenuator on it. I mean, I don't know what else you could ask for out of an all-in-one pedal that's meant to be in your bag. You can take it and go, and you're gonna have the ease of access and the simplicity of creativity. So the Blackstar Amphitheater really knocks it out of the park. I can't speak highly enough about it. I'm a little biased in the sense that I do own one, but I mean, if I'm around music gear all day long and I'm willing to put my hard-earned money into it, you can, you know, almost bet your bottom dollar that that's gonna be a damn good product. So um, this is, you know, this is a, a touching of, of some of the cool stuff that can happen. You know, check it out online. Blackstar's got some great videos that they've curated to help, you know, explain their cab rig and their DSP software, everything they've done in that sense, and that go through maybe a little more in depth on some of the clean settings and stuff like that, and how much you can really expand this pedal to be. Like I mentioned, you've got presets in here as well, so if I wanted to, I could just press and hold this setting, which, I mean, when these cameras turn off, I might take an extra 10 minutes and make a, a custom setting here and save a new preset and take that home with me today because that sounded fantastic. So you've got preset options. You've got every bit of you know quirkiness and versatility that you could ask for on the top side like you would get in the normal amp, and you're getting all that digital side on the back side. So Blackstar Amp 3, what more could you want? My name is Shane. This has been the Arts Music Store's Canadian Gear Guide, checking out some great new products here today. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Cheers.